The Evolution of Old School RuneScape Old School RuneScape is an open-world sandbox MMO with no set path for players to take. Players are encouraged to develop their own goals and communities by utilizing the game's simple, mouse-based interface and polygonal graphics. It is one of the most diversified and popular massively multiplayer games on the market with thousands of activities, 23 talents to level, and a thriving, player-driven economy. In this video, we'll take a look at the evolutions of Old School RuneScape. Though it's tough to imagine now, Old School RuneScape was originally regarded as a risky proposition. On February 15, 2013, the questions of its establishment was given to player in a poll, with the number of votes determining its pricing and support from RuneScape's developers, Jagex. According to the then Jagex CEO Mark Gerhardt, the concept was prompted by forum remarks from players yearning for RuneScape's golden days, which were decided to be 2006-2007. After looking through previous backups, the development team discovered an August 2007 version and restored it to playable condition. It was an opportunity for RuneScape's tree dwindling player base to not just relieve nostalgia, but also to return to a version of the game they thought superior. The poll garnered 449,531 votes over the course of two weeks. This fell short of the 500,000 mark required for it to be added at no additional cost to current members. Seeing the community's enthusiasm, the Jagex team decided to disregard the nearly 50,000 vote disadvantage and make it available to members for free. It also integrated several higher tier goals such as anti-bot technology. Old School RuneScape was available to all paying players on Windows and Mac OS by February 22, 2013. It was an instant success. Today, Old School RuneScape is the most popular versions of the game and player polls have determined numerous modifications. Notably, it reinstated the Grand Exchange as a universal trade platform, restored support for Android and iOS, and got several quests and new items. Despite the fact that old RuneScape has a small developer staff in comparison to the current versions of RuneScape, it receives regular updates and new content on par with the flagship product. The majority of updates and modifications are surveyed and voted on in-game. Players vote on suggested improvements, and they are only implemented if 70% of paying players agree. Poll results used to be viewable to everyone before they voted. However, after April 2019, poll results were hidden until the polls closed. Suggestions from Reddit users have been polled and integrated into the game. Between the 2007 build on which OSRS is based and now, RuneScape 3 has gotten a slew of improvements. It is impossible to explain the hundreds of patches, updates, and upgrades here. But the key areas in which they differ are combat, graphics, skills, and population. The most obvious distinctions between Old School RuneScape and RuneScape 3 is the graphical design. OSRS features a low polygon appearance with few textures and no current lighting techniques. With the exceptions of compatibility for current aspect ratios and other quality of life enhancements, it looks essentially the same as it did in 2007. Meanwhile, RuneScape 3 includes a modern C++ based client that allows it to use many new graphic methods. Though definitely not on pace with most new AAA titles, it does include high resolution textures and models, ambient occlusion, soft shadows, and a significantly increased draw distance. All of this adds up to a noticeably superior, if not as attractive graphics experience than old school RuneScape. Old School RuneScape employs the classic RuneScape fighting method, which is primarily based on point and click. Despite its simplicity, the fighting system has a high skill ceiling, with top tier players needing to swiftly manage active prayers, their health, numerous damage types, and more. RuneScape 3 primarily makes use of the Evolution Combat Update, which added an action bar based combat system akin to World of Warcraft. It's worth mentioning though that RS3 allows users to disable this feature and return to regular fighting if they want. When compared to RuneScape 3, Old School RuneScape has less talents, with a total of 26 rather than 29. On the other hand, skills like Divination and Invention can revitalize the game, but they can also confuse it further. Aside from that, the manner in which skills are trained can differ greatly across the two game versions. In general, leveling a skill in OSRS takes longer due to lower experience rates, a lack of experience boosts and buffs, and the need for more human input. Some will see this as a disadvantage, while others will see it as a benefit. The traditional RuneScape surpassed RuneScape 3 in terms of player counts in 2016 and has remained there ever since. Though the population varies greatly from month to month, 
OSRS active users are frequently double that of RS3. This can be viewed as either a positive or a bad thing. On the other hand, bigger player counts generally results in increased rivalry for resources, particularly in free-to-play environments. On the other hand, it may imply a more vibrant community and a simpler time choosing a group that works for you. In addition to the standard gameplay of old-school RuneScape, users can pick from three additional modes, Iron Man, Dead Man, and Leaks. Iron Man is a harder version of RuneScape that was released in 2014. When a player registers as an Iron Man account, he or she is forced to be nearly self-sufficient. Trading, the Grand Exchange, PvP, minigames and other forms of interactions are prohibited or restricted. As a result, they must collect and produce resources for armor, weapons, potions and anything else they may require throughout the game. Iron Man play on the same server as regular players, but can only communicate with them through in-game chat. Meanwhile, Deadman mode is hosted on a different server and has an open PvP environment with a few safe zones. Players gain 20 times more experience in the first 30 minutes, 10 times in the first 6 hours and 5 times after that. Users gain blood money after murdering another player which they can spend to purchase Deadman armor which can be retrieved for free after death. Old School RuneScape leaks are seasonal events that require players to complete tasks on servers with altered game rules. Aside from trade or region limits, these servers can have increased experience and often reward users with the selections of powerful perks when they complete a task. So far, there have been two leaks, with the first beginning in November 2019. Leaks normally begin in the fall and terminate in the following January. Though leaks' progress does not carry over to the main game, players can use in-game currency to purchase cosmetics that do. Playing old school, the presence of a membership in RuneScape has a big impact on the game. Even yet, one of the amazing things about OSRS is that you can access thousands of hours of content as a non-member. Though many players pay for their membership with real money, it's worth mentioning that you can also acquire an OSRS bond with in-game currency. Old school RuneScape bonds typically cost between 5 and 6 million gold and provide gamers with 15 days of membership. However, due to skill and requirement and equipment limitations, obtaining enough gold for a bond might be time-consuming. Even the finest free-to-play money-making strategies are limited to roughly 500,000 gold every hour, implying at least 10 hours of labor. However, most gamers will earn much less than that and may need to invest 30 hours or more. This is partially offset by the fact that once you have a membership, it is considerably easier to produce money and hence sustain your subscription only through bonds. The value of paying for OSRS membership is determined by the player their playstyle, and the regularity in which they play. If you enjoyed the free-to-play game and want more content, skills, plot, monsters, or bosses, membership is quite valuable. This is especially true if you also play RS3, as your membership will be valid for both games. While it is feasible to pay for your membership using bonds, it will take a significant amount of time. With subscription plans ranging from $8.34 to $10.99 a month, those with day jobs may find it more cost-effective to pay rather than spend their limited free time grinding for gold. If, on the other hand, you enjoy making money in RuneScape, paying for a membership with a bond is a no-brainer. We have merely scraped the surface of old, school runes, of old school RuneScape's lore and history, which could be a good thing. A lot of the fun in OSRS comes from discovering and exploring the worlds around you whether it's an interesting piece of lore or the best way to train a specific ability. What is certain is that this game, which began as a simple browser-based game, will continue to expand in scope as its community-driven development process continues. If you haven't already, now is the time to begin with this fascinating throwback to 2007. And with that being said, it's time to end our today video. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this. We'll see you with another interesting video.